This is Mrs. O'Neill for Chapter 9, Section 3, Writing Formulas for Molecular Compounds. In this section, you're going to interpret the prefixes in the names of molecular compounds in terms of their chemical formulas. Apply the rules for naming and writing formulas for binary molecular compounds. So you should have watched that intro information on naming compounds part two. In this case, you should have watched the beginning to about a minute and 12 seconds. I know you watched the end part basically for the ionic compounds and the beginning for molecular. So he kind of did it a little bit backwards than what I usually do it. So here are my notes and hopefully you basically got the idea of his examples on how to write covalent formulas. Now he calls them covalent and the book calls them molecular. So again I, I say to you many different words for the same kind of, of thing. So off to your notes packet. Gold was one of the first metals to attract human attention. When gold was discovered in California in the 1840s, people from all over the world came to find it and make their fortune. Today, gold is still greatly prized and valued. Whereas one milligram of gold is worth only about a cent, one kilogram of gold is worth about 12,500. And that number might even be bigger now since they wrote this uh, little synopsis here. In this case, using the correct prefix milli or kilo makes quite a difference. And we saw that also in chapter three when we were dealing with those uh, prefixes for the metric unit. Prefixes are important in chemistry too. In this section, you will learn how prefixes in the name of a binary molecular compound tells you its composition. So let's look here. Carbon and oxygen will combine. It forms carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. So again, you have two elements, carbon and oxygen, and when they come together, they can form two different compounds. So these two invisible gases, though, are very important, and they are very different. Carbon monoxide is an invisible gas, and it is very toxic. It's a product of incomplete burning such as occurs in automobile engines and faulty furnaces. So carbon monoxide. So where do you think that monoxide comes from? Well, there's only one oxygen in this formula, but now let's look at dioxide. Well, that's where that two comes from. So that's what we're gonna be dealing with is prefixes. Sitting in a room with small amounts of carbon dioxide in the air would not present any problems. If the same amount of carbon monoxide CO versus that CO2 were in the room, you could die of exfiscination. Sorry, not sure exactly how to pronounce that. I probably should have looked that up before I made the video. But if you know me by now, I kind of make up my own words and my own um, uh, syllabus, right? Or the, my own uh, syllables. A naming system that distinguishes between these two compounds is greatly needed. Just like in the beginning of the chapter, I talked about that sodium and that chlorine, and as them by themselves are very toxic, they come together and make that compound sodium chloride we make every day. And I also talked about all of those compounds, all of that deal with um, antibi uh, antibiotics and how, again, depending on your body, you might be okay with one or two of them, but maybe uh, a reaction to another. And you saw all of those different chemical formulas. Uh, and, and again, the different the elements were the same, but the amount of those elements were different. And that could mean, again, life or death to a doctor uh, who's prescribe, prescribing them to you. So again, this is another example of how one compound is quite different than another, even with the same elements, but different ratios. So the dioxide is okay, but the monoxide, not so much. So pause the video, fill in the blanks, please read as you write, and then play to hear my words. So when we're writing molecular or covalent compounds, those are one of the same, they're always going to start with a nonmetal. And they're almost always just a binary compound. Again, binary compound meaning two elements. Well, I'll tell you this right now. If it starts with a nonmetal, it's going to always end with a nonmetal. So we're always interested in what it starts with.
And in this time, we're not going to worry about charges like we did for ionic. However, we are going to worry about the prefixes. And the prefixes are going to tell us how many of that element are in a compound, hence its composition. And that's what chemistry is all about, the structure, the composition, and what things are made of. So pause the video and make sure to get these prefixes in. And yes, you're going to have to know these prefixes. Most of them you probably already know or have heard of, but you are going to need to know the prefixes. So pause and make sure to get those in. All right. So for the most part, you're going to see one through six, um, seven, eight, nine, and 10. You don't see very often, if at all, but they are there just in case you might see them once or twice. Uh, but the most, mostly you're going to see these first five, even hexa a couple of times. And then again, if you see seven, eight, nine, or 10, it'll be very, very in small amounts. So pause again and make sure to get this information down. So just like I said, the first part is a non-metal and the second part is a non-metal as well. So you're dealing with two non-metals in a molecular compound. And the prefix of the name is going to give us the subscript in our formula. So these are examples. What I suggest you do is kind of listen at least to the first two, then pause and write in the chemical formula. And then again, do the same thing with three and four. So how do we write the chemical formula for carbon tetrachloride? Well, this is what we're going to do. We're going to look at carbon and you're going to look on your periodic table and the symbol for carbon is capital C. Now, how many carbon atoms are in this uh, formula? Well, I'm going to look at the prefix. If I do not see a prefix for the first part of the compound, that means it's one. And remember, we're not going to write a one. One is just understood. So because if I ask you right now, how many C's do you see? Haha, <laughs> you would say one. All right. Now for the second part, I'm going to focus on chloride. That must have come from chlorine. So that's going to be Cl on my periodic table. But how many Cl's do I have? Well, tetra. And if you look at your prefix list, tetra means four, kind of like Tetris, that game with the four blocks, right? Every single um, a shape has four little blocks to it. That's why it's called Tetris. All right, let's try number two. So again, I'm going to focus on what element is my first part, and that's phosphorus. I'm going to look at the periodic table, and that's a P. How many P's do I have? Well, di, um, think about even dice, you usually have two of them, right? So di means two. Uh, that's going to be your first part, P2. And again, your subscripts are down below how many you have. Second part is sulfide. That must have come from sulfide. Fur. Okay, and now sulfur is capital S. And now how many do we have? Well, we have tri, kind of like a tricycle, and that's going to be a little three. So you notice how I'm doing this. I'm figuring out what element I have and then how many are there, and that's going to be my little um, subscripts. Again, I'm not dealing with any charges or anything, no crisscrossing, nothing. So for some of you, this is probably going to be a little bit easier than the ionic compounds, and some may be a little bit more confusing. So again, either way, you got to know it. So pause and make sure you get that information out. And you might want to do what I did, maybe square, circle, highlight, however, to get you to understand where those components come from. All right, so you should have paused by now. Let's try um, number three here. Again, bromine is BR on our periodic table. I'm going to look at the prefix. There is none, so there's not going to be any here. So that's kind of a clue here that mono is not used in the first part of the compound name. And you'll see that more uh, again and again. So mono, again, is not used in the first part for the prefix. Uh, the second part here, fluoride, came from fluorine, and that's just going to be plain old capital F. And how many are there? Well, penta means five, kind of like a pentagon. All right, number four. Again, my first part, nitrogen, uh, is N, capital N, right? And the dye tells me that I have two of them. That's going to be my subscript. All right, monoxide. Oxide came from oxygen. And how many do I have? Well, mono means one. So again, I don't need to write the one. Those are understood.
All right, so hopefully that kind of makes sense. And again, you can always rewind and replay them or make sure that you're, you know, using a little notations here to get you to understand where, where everything is coming from. All right, pause the video, make sure you have those two examples. All right, let's look at these practice problems. Again, you might wanna try one or two of them and then listen to what I say, um, or listen again to one or two, or do what you need to do to, to get you to understand these problems. All right, so what I did was hexa means six and mono means one. So there's boron is B, so that's gonna be my six borons, and nitride is nitrogen, and I only have one of them. So again, I'm focusing really on my prefixes to tell me how many of each element I have. And the other thing I want you to take notice is the first element, the first part of the compound are all non-metals. They're all to the right of that line. All right, so iodine does not have a prefix, so that means mono, right? That means there's only one of them. And fluoride, really fluorine, has five. So again, I'm focusing on one iodine atom and five fluorine atoms. All right, number three, I think I did a little differently. Um, I'm focusing again on the di and the tri. Oh no, I did the same way. <laughs> so two ends and three oxygens. So two nitrogens, di nitrogens, and three oxygens for trioxide. All right, number four here again, we have uh, no prefix. So that means there's just gonna be one of them. Tetra means four, so I'm gonna have four fluorine atoms. So one selenium is SE, again, capital S, little e, capital F for fluorine, and there's four of them. So hopefully that's, it's kind of clicking. And again, you're gonna be seeing these prefixes a lot, so they'll, they'll click. Uh, you'll, you'll memorize them kind of just by dealing with these kinds of compounds. All right, can you do five through eight? I believe here I didn't highlight anything. I'm just gonna give you the answer. So make sure to pause and try them on your own. So number five's answer is CO. Again, mono is used in the second part of the compound, but not the first. Something to take notice of when we're gonna go the other way in the next section. So number six, sulfur dioxide, again, starts with a non-metal and it's SO2. Here I see two prefixes. So if I see two prefixes, I better see two subscripts. So I have a two for the phosphorus and a three for the iodine. And number eight, CCL4. All right, hopefully that makes sense. And we'll see you in class for questions.